In today's video, I'm gonna show you the six different meals that I actually cooked this past work week as you'll follow me making lunch and dinner on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, which all started from prepping a single pack of $10 chicken thighs. And this video is a follow-up to one that I made a couple of weeks ago, where we talked about that while meal prepping can be great to save time and money, it just doesn't work for everyone because there are some downsides. This includes one, it requires a high amount of activation effort. Secondly, reheated meals typically lack taste and texture. Third, there can be little variety. And then fourth, I don't get to use my cooking skills and creativity during the week. And in that video, we talked about the human psychology behind the framework that I like to use before putting it to practice with three different recipes using braised beef. But I have to say, I kind of cheated a little bit with the meals in that video because one, I knew that I was gonna be around on Sunday to braise, and secondly, I did pre-plan those recipes so they would be well thought out and put together. But in today's video, that's not the case. This is truly an unplanned look at the meals that I did make this week, and there are a couple of weird ones in here. But as we progress through each day and each meal, here's what I want you to pay attention to. One, the number of fridge, pantry, and freezer staples that I use. Secondly, is how the meal was inspired. Third, the time taken. And then fourth, how I ingredient stack, which instead of making extra leftovers to reheat, I'll loosely define ingredient stacking as cooking an extra ingredient component from one meal and using it to create a different meal. So what is the key to making a variety of quick but delicious meals even during a busy week? And that starts with using the two minute rule on Sunday. I was away for five days visiting family and got back from the airport on Sunday at around 5.30 p.m. After an obligatory case of scoliosis, it's off to the grocery store and basically my entire approach is this. Buy a protein, buy some produce, and figure out the rest tomorrow. At this point, I have no idea what I'm gonna make. These groceries cost me $22.91 and this is actually all I spent in the course of the three days for this video because as you'll see, the rest of the meals came from stuff I already had in the freezer, fridge, or pantry. So following that framework I laid out a couple of videos ago, all I'm gonna do at this point, now that I bought the protein, is salt the protein. I pulled out a wire rack over a baking sheet and laid out six chicken thighs. I decided to freeze the last two since I wasn't sure if I was going to need them or not and can always pull them out later if needed. And one tip here that I like to do is cut off any excess fat and make cross cuts into the thicker sections of the thigh so they lie flat for cooking. Then all I do is add a big sprinkle over top of both sides before placing that in the fridge to rest overnight. And again, the psychology behind this is using the two minute rule to kind of just put things in action and then greater things will happen down the line. And let's start with Monday, which ended up being a really weird day for me. First, I got up way earlier than normal and headed to a WeWork at 6 a.m. to finish out the flower pizza video. It just had a lot of pop-ups, clips, and other text-heavy graphics that needed to be added. So I locked in, made a little checklist for each section, and then finally at like 12.35, I finished everything, but I had to re-export and upload three copies, so I didn't actually end up heading home until around 3 p.m. when I was absolutely starving. So the next step in the framework is to braise the chicken, which I should have done this morning, but it was early and I kind of forgot. But what's great about just having dry brined chicken thighs in the fridge is that they cook and crisp up in no time. For lunch, I pulled out two of the salted chicken thighs and placed them in a bowl. Then I made a mayo marinade with dried oregano, red pepper flake, and some onion powder before mixing that all together. And I'm not gonna eat both of these for lunch, the second one I'll be using for dinner. To cook, slap each thigh onto a hot pan or griddle and sear on both sides until brown. Now, while the chicken cooks, let me tell you why today's sponsor, Made In, has, in my opinion, the number one gift for home cooks this holiday. From the carbon steel fry pan, to a stainless steel one, to the baking sheets, I think about every piece of cookware used in this video is from Made In. But what has quickly become my most used and favorite item, and the one being used to cook the chicken, is this carbon steel griddle, which basically does not leave my stovetop. As you'll see as we continue this video, it's a recurring character on each day. Like, I cannot state just how much I love this thing and consider it an integral part of my day-to-day -day cooking. And also, the griddle press is a really nice touch as well. 
I've already gifted this to my parents and my brother and his wife, so if you are looking to pick this up for yourself or a home cook that you love this holiday, head to the link below for 10% off your order. And thanks again, Made In, for helping me cook some delicious food. But now, let's get back to lunch. So while the chicken was cooking, I grabbed out the other ingredients, which was some frozen Detroit-style pizza from the prior flour video, banana peppers, Parmigiano-Reggiano, and then some romaine lettuce that I just chopped up. Once the chicken was about done cooking, I actually sliced that Detroit-style pizza in half so I could make a sandwich out of it. So I tossed the pizza on the back of the griddle and let that crisp up on the interior. To assemble the sandwich, add the banana peppers and the shredded lettuce before tossing on the chopped chicken and adding a big shaving of Parmigiano-Reggiano, and I absolutely demolished this thing. Today's been a weird day, honestly. Um, it's like almost four o'clock and I'm just eating. And I honestly, I was so locked in earlier, I kind of forgot I was filming this video and then realized I hadn't eaten, so I just kind of threw something together. Weird meal, probably not the most pretty thing in the world, but again, had some frozen pizza in the fridge and that's literally just what I thought about on the way home. And I was like, yeah, let's make a little sandwich out of it with some chicken and this is, tastes really good. Doesn't really look really good, but anyway, my brain is like completely fried now, right now can't even talk. So I'm just gonna turn off the camera. I'll meet you guys back for lunch. Um, I'm probably just gonna take a couple of hours and just completely get my mind off of things. After lunch, I decided to stretch the leg and was able to speed walk eight holes at the golf course before it got dark. And then I just kind of putzed around until dinner at 7.45. And since I had only eaten a couple of hours ago, I wanted something a little bit lighter, but still packed with flavor. So I already cooked that extra chicken thigh at lunch and it made dinner prep that much easier. First, I sliced up some of the romaine lettuce and tossed that into a bowl, followed by some red onion, a bunch of cherry tomatoes, and then I finished off the jar of banana peppers. Next, I chopped up the chicken. And then instead of using it cold, I like to microwave it just a bit to give the salad some temperature contrast. Then all we need to do is make a vinaigrette. I poured the banana pepper liquid into a container and then added some olive oil, and here is where we pack in the flavor. I added some dried rosemary and black pepper to a mortar and pestle and crushed those up. Next, I added a clove of fresh garlic and mashed that as well before tossing it in with the oil and acid and giving it a shake. Before pouring it over, I gave the salad a big fistful of Parmigiano and then mixed everything together and this salad is absolutely popping with flavor. I also heated up another frozen slice of pizza, Neapolitan this time. And just like that, we have some dinner. One of my favorite kind of fresh, quick things to make. And I had, again, I have pizza in the fridge just like constantly. So I'm trying to slowly go through it, but not eat it as like an entire meal. So I'm gonna eat it with the salad. But other things you could do to kind of add some more bulk or volume to this is just maybe throw in some chickpeas or something like that. Um, you could throw in uh, orzo or like a pasta and just kind of mix it all together. Basically the keys are make a nice like dressing vinaigrette with fat, throw a bunch of Parm reg or whatever Parmesan you got. I still have Parmesan from the Parmesan video. So throwing that over. And uh, yeah, this is kind of what a lot of meals end up looking like using different components from videos and random groceries I have. But uh, yeah, so that was Monday. Kind of a weird day today. Tomorrow will be, I would say, a little bit more normal day for me. Um, so I'll see you guys tomorrow for uh, lunch, I guess. Tuesday was a much more relaxed day for me. I woke up around 7.30 a.m. and then went to pick up some heavy things and put them down again. And then I just worked from home to do some writing and I had a couple of meetings until lunchtime. So I decided to roast both poblanos even though I'll only be using one of them for lunch. And for the one I'm using for lunch, I sliced the top off, removed the seeds and membrane, and then tossed in some chunks of Monterey Jack cheese. Before roasting, I also grabbed out one of the chicken thighs and added it to a bowl. To season this one, I added a sprinkle of ground cumin, smoked paprika, and cayenne powder before using just a drizzle of oil this time around. To cook these, I added the whole roast of a blano on one burner and did the one with the cheese on the other burner. And meanwhile, I was also cooking the chicken on the griddle. Now, once the poblanos were blackened on the outside, I added them both to a container to let steam and soften a bit while the chicken finishes cooking. Once the chicken was done, I brought that over to the cutting board and just rough chopped it up. Then I pulled the steamed poblano pepper out of the container and flecked off some of that burnt bits on the exterior of the skin that can just give it a little bit of a weird mouthfeel. Then slap the poblano and cheese on top and chop everything together before adding that back to the griddle. 
Now, while that continues to cook, I'm not resting around and doing nothing. I'm actually taking care of two things. One, always be cleaning as you go. It's amazing just how much it helps. And then secondly, I started to cook the other three chicken thighs. For this, I added the three brine chicken thighs to a frying pan and then topped them with some duck fat that I got from the farmer's market a few weeks back. Next, I topped that up with water and threw it all in the oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit to let it slow braise for about four hours. Back to our lunch though, I assembled by adding the chicken, cheese, and poblano to a flour tortilla. Then I topped with some diced red onion, crema, and salsa verde before adding a handful of shredded lettuce. And now it's time to devour. So here we have meal number three. It's like a poblano con queso chicken style hybrid and I am just absolutely devouring the thing right now. I'm gonna go make another one right after I finish this section. But also a pretty productive lunch overall. Like I have another um, poblano that is just, I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. Maybe I'll use it for dinner tonight. Maybe I'll use it for lunch or dinner tomorrow. We'll figure something out. And then I also got the chicken started in the oven. So again, just water and I added some extra duck fat. I happen to have some. So it can almost be like, chicken carnitas in a way. Then I'll shred that chicken up and probably use it for dinner, lunch tomorrow, dinner the next day. Um, and I left it purposely neutral flavored so we can kind of keep the options open. I'm gonna head out for like the rest of the afternoon, do some work, maybe do some hot yoga, and then I will catch you guys for dinner. After three hours of afternoon work and getting decimated at hot yoga in the evening, I got home and was greeted by some chicken that needed shredding. And it's not pretty, but this chicken is so tender, it basically just falls apart, and I was pretty pumped about it. You don't really ever think to, you know, slow braise your chicken in the oven for like four hours, but it is so much more tender and absolutely flakes apart. And then just mix it with some of that, the juice, the duck fat with some of the, the water and like absolutely incredible. And what's best about it is this can be used for just about anything. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm pretty pumped for dinner. I don't know what I'm gonna make yet, but uh, I'll see you guys back in maybe an hour, hour and a half or so. I've got to clean up, got some other stuff to do. And then, uh, then we'll get on with dinner. At around 7.32, it's time for dinner, which what better to do than a one pot cheesy pasta? All I did was chop up the roast of a poblano from earlier and the chicken, and then found the last of a box of pasta and some white cheddar powder that will be used to make the pasta sauce. At the stove, add the pasta to a pan and then cover it with water and a sprinkle of salt. And all you have to do is boil and cook the pasta until basically all of the water evaporates off and now we can make it into a sauce. Turn the heat to the lowest it will go. Then I added 50 grams of some crema or sour cream and 20 grams of the white cheddar powder. And after mixing, this may be the easiest cheesy pasta sauce you could imagine. To spice things up though, I added some smoked paprika, ground cumin, and garlic powder. Next, toss in the poblano and the chicken and just stir everything together. Now, important, to adjust the sauce consistency as needed, you can just add a little water to thin it out or add some more of the cheese powder if you wanna up the cheddar flavor, but that's really it. Pour this into a bowl and I top with some cotija cheese in the fridge and cilantro, and it's definitely got that suburban mom pasta vibe, but I'm completely here for it. So I forgot just how good this combination is. The roast poblanos mixed with just some of those spices and then chicken. So it's a really filling pasta or like almost like a mac and cheese made with the white cheddar powder instead of actual cheese. And today was kind of a little bit more like, yeah, like Mexican-ish inspired, but definitely just kind of also using up some things that I needed to use up. Like I had a little bit of pasta left, used up that. Excited to use the rest of this chicken, but uh, see you guys tomorrow. On Wednesday, I worked from a coffee shop for the first few hours of the morning, uploading footage and beginning to write the script for this video before lunch. Just got back from a light jog, super nice outside, but I have some frozen pita bread from like probably a month ago at this point, and then gonna use this chicken, make some kind of pita sandwich type thing. I don't know, we'll see what we get into. For this, I pulled out some of the chicken from yesterday and just heated that up before adding it to a bowl. Then I made a chicken salad-esque situation by adding some dried thyme, oregano, red pepper flakes, and garlic powder before adding a small spoonful of mayo and a spoonful of non-fat plain yogurt for a little extra protein. Additionally, I added some diced onion and diced cherry tomatoes before mixing that all together. To assemble, I added a heaping amount of the chicken to the defrosted pita bread before topping with some shredded Monterey Jack that was used yesterday for the poblano con queso. 
Then I toss the whole pita onto the griddle to crisp it up on both sides and let the cheese melt. And this thing came out just perfectly brown and crisp. And of course, I sliced on a diagonal and now it's time to enjoy. So initially I was actually thinking like chicken over rice um, for lunch today, but I saw these pitas in the freezer from like literally probably a month ago. And then I was like, let's just make some kind of sandwich. And then I had some Monterey Jack from the Poblano con queso yesterday. So I was like, let's make a melt. And then kind of just made like an herb yogurt mayo sauce, which is really, really good. And this is something I've never made before, but I probably will start making it again. So I'm gonna finish this and I will catch you for our final meal, which is dinner later tonight. After lunch, I took advantage of the beautiful weather to walk nine holes again. And then I headed to finish up some more work from five to 7.30. And then tonight's final dinner may have been the quickest and best tasting of them all. And that is some chilaquiles verde. For these, I had a tiny bit of store-bought salsa verde left and added that to a pan with some leftover beet stock. And I felt like I needed more salsa, so I did add a little bit of some green chili sauce too. But once that was hot, I crushed up some tostadas and threw those in the pan. And the major key for these is finding your preferred soggy to crunchy ratio. For me, I like some crunch to them still, so I leave them in for just 45 to 60 seconds, and that's really it. To assemble, add the chilaquiles to a bowl, and I wish I had more sauce, but oh well. I tossed on some diced onion, added a spoonful of crema, and then topped with the heated up shredded chicken. Lastly, I added some diced tomato, crumbled over cotilla cheese, and finally fresh cilantro, and it's just a ridiculously easy textural masterpiece. So in conclusion, everyone's day-to-day -day life as a home cook is gonna look a little bit different. Some of you may be cooking for two, three, four, five people. Some may have to go to the office every day. Some of you may have a partner that you kind of split duties with, but hopefully you were able to pick up on some tips or techniques that you can utilize in your day-to-day -day life or just some recipe inspiration. This is one of my methods that I like to do if I know I've kind of got like a busier start to the week and then I can kind of chill out as I go and not really have to worry about having like a set number of recipes or meals that I have to make right up front. Again, it's all about starting the process and then just kind of seeing where things end up at the end of the week. But anyway, the recipes for this video are kind of based off other recipes and some of them I literally made for the first time. So I will link them below if you do wanna try out these or follow them, but that will wrap it up for me in this one. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace y'all.